Hello, hello. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Yoga Stretch. My name is Gabrielle. Hi, Janice. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Yogi Piggy. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Ewan. Welcome. Hi, Aling. Joanne. Patty. Hi, Sri. Hi, Chia Romi. Hi, Elisa. Hi, Kristin. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. You're joining me, Gabrielle Mendoza, for 60 minutes of yoga stretch. Now, I mentioned this last week. I am deliberately making this practice as accessible and straightforward as possible. So if you have anyone within your cluster or within where you stay, um, or a colleague or a friend that you'd like to invite to join in, I'd love you to quickly grab them to join the practice. Now, if they don't happen to have a yoga mat, um, my nieces and nephews, they're using like a children's play mat. And if you have a carpet or a big rug at home, you could use that too. So sometimes non-yogis are a little intimidated, you know, by, by not having the props or what they think is required for the practice, but really you can use anything at home, okay? So for practice today, we're using one strap. If you don't have a strap, necktie, bathrobe, a uh, tie, large towel will suffice. Um, and we're using two blocks. And if you don't have uh, blocks, you can use heavy books or any Tupperware that might be sturdy, okay? So I see I've got a hundred of you guys right now. I'm so happy um, to be leading you through this practice. Uh, for practice today, we're gonna to slowly work our way up into back bends, okay? Now, um, we're going to limber the spine in the six directions that it can move forward, backwards, twisting to the side, and stretching to the side. So we're gonna help the body feel good from head to toe. We're doing a combination of active and passive practice, uh, uh, active and passive stretching. And today I wanna to share more benefits with you. So the benefits of active stretching would be to help improve circulation to the muscles. So oxygen, blood flow, and this would really help with your renewal and recovery, especially after any form of strenuous exercise. And if you have any uh, pain or tension that is a result of muscular tightness, this can also bring great relief for you. Now, um, at the end of the day, if you stretch after your strenuous activity, you're also going to help the body um, perform better in the long run. Now, for passive stretching, there are a couple of benefits as well, improving your overall flexibility, uh, mobility, as well as stimulating muscle growth. Uh, one of the many, a few of the many uh, benefits uh, that passive stretching has. So I love for you to just dedicate the next 60 minutes to what's feeling good in the body, okay? I hope you've already invited your friends and grabbed the props that you're going to need. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Cleefan. Hi, Archana. Hi, Jermaine. Elian. Julia. Good to have so many guys, so many of you guys. If you're practicing with me for the first time or if you're practicing with an injury or pregnancy, please leave me a message. I'll check in from time to time. I'm going to do my best to look after you as best as I can. Now, everybody, are you ready to begin? I hope you are. Let's get straight into it. Stand on your mat. Now stand with your feet hip width distance apart and roll the shoulders back. This beginning posture is called Tadasana Mountain Pose. Let's, let's push down through your feet and rise up through the ribs and the crown of your head. Take a deep breath, inhale. Let's begin with the slow head rotation. So take it clockwise and hold on tight to the belly. Keep the legs straight, the spine stacked, the collarbones wide, and just roll out the muscles in the neck. Breathe in. Change direction, breathe out. Start to feel what's happening in the neck, the shoulders, the upper back. 
and then see if your breath can flow smoothly as you inhale and as you exhale. Slowly come back to center. Now shake the arms out, limber the wrists, the elbows, and now as you keep this action going, take the arms up, inhale. Take the arms down, exhale. Just like that, four more times. Inhale, up. So easy and straightforward, right? Exhale, down. Inhale up. You don't need any form of experience to be able to join this practice. Exhale down. Inhale up. My main objective is to help your body to feel good and to help you to be able to enjoy yourself uh, as a much needed midday break. Last time up. Inhale. Now grow a little taller. Rise onto your tippy toes. Squeeze the inner thighs. Use the engagement in the buttocks and hold the belly in. Exhale, heels down, arms all the way to the floor. Now roll the shoulders up and back. And then forward and down. Wonderful. Now it's time to reach for your strap, okay? If you don't have a strap, go ahead, necktie, towel, whatever you have at home, doesn't matter. I'd like you not to hold on to your prop and keep the prop of choice really taut. So imagine what it's like for your guitar strings to be like, should be really tight, okay? So we're not going to hold it this way. We're going to make it really taut. Now, with your Tadasana position, I'd like you to take the arms up above the head. You know what it's like when people do weight lifting, right? So the strap or your prop is taut. You're standing tall, arms are straight. Now breathe in deeply. As you exhale, I like your grip to be adjustable. So as you draw the strap back and endeavor to keep your arms straight, if you feel like you can't move past a certain point, let go of the strap a little bit more and then let the strap go all the way to your lower back. Let's try. Inhale up. So we're creating mobility in the shoulders. Exhale forward and down. So make sure you adjust to where you can manage. Inhale up. Go taller, belly in, open the ribs. Exhale back. So what we're really doing right now is we are energizing the shoulders. Inhale up. Neck long, shoulders down. Exhale down. Now feel what's happening in your chest and in the front of the shoulders where your deltoid muscles are. Inhale, lift. Slowly, slowly, slowly adjust if you need to. Now feel that maximum active stretch while you're here. Exhale back. Inhale up. If your shoulders are tight, please be compassionate to your body. Don't injure yourself. Exhale down. Breathe and lift. Exhale back. Inhale up. Exhale down. Our final three rounds. If you feel okay, narrow the grip a little. So we're increasing the intensity and difficulty. Inhale up. Slowly, progressively, exhale back. So don't stick your bum out like that. Tailbone down, lower belly in, ribs hugging in as well. Good. Push into your feet. Inhale up. Go taller, chin parallel to the floor. Exhale to lower. Inhale up. Are you breathing, expanding, widening, and opening? Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Last time, everybody. Slow and steadily, we're increasing the circulation within your body. So you should start to already feel some heat. Exhale down. Wonderful. Take your arms up to the ceiling. And now take your feet a little wider, maybe met with distance apart. Lift your left heel off the floor and keep your right leg super straight and your arms super long. Twist to your right. So we're not going to stick the butt out, tailbone under, stand upright. Now squeeze the inner thighs and lengthen through the crown of the head. Narrow the belly and start to turn towards the wall behind you. Come back to center, lower your left heel to the mat. Breathe in, right heel up, narrow your belly, exhale, turn. So as you stay here for another three more long breaths, Every time you exhale, the belly button draws in. Every time you inhale, the spine grows taller. So basically, you have a three breath 
window of opportunity to deepen your twist a little bit more. A lot of us twist out of the lower back. I'm going to try and encourage you to twist out of the middle back. So turn the heart towards the back of the room and maybe to add on a stretch for the right side of your neck, you're going to try and turn the head, align the chin with the left shoulder. Good, come back to center, lower your right heel down. Nice. Now, I'm going to get you to move against the wall if it is convenient for you. Okay, I've got a big wall right where I am, so I'm going to take my strap and my body to the wall. I'm going to paste my body to the wall, and now I'm going to go really tall. Narrow the gap of the strap, the length of the strap onto its shoulder with distance apart. We're going to use the wall to do a standing half moon. Breathe in, go tall as you exhale to the right side. Now, notice I've only moved my head and my arms. I invite you to push your left hip out and push your right shoulder blade against the wall. Now, point the tip of the nose forward towards me. Straighten both of your arms. Pull the strap here for another 30 seconds. So in our stretching postures today, we're going to do one minute holds, okay? And as you alternate between active and passive, you're gonna feel and receive the benefits of both. Keep pushing the back of your right thigh bone into the wall behind you. Now peel your left armpit up to the ceiling, narrow your belly, squeeze your inner knees, and lift up through the pelvic floor, and then push your wrists out of the shoulder joints. Belly in, lower back pressing against the wall. Let's go deeper together. Last five pounds. Inhale first. Now go deeper. Five, four, three, two, one. Change. <sighs> Come back to center. Take a deep breath. It's not easy to be talking while holding the stretch, by the way. You can try it, okay? Inhale, deep breath. And as you exhale, one minute. Let's do it together. Slowly, slowly, slowly. So you're going to move your upper body first while keeping the stability through the strong grounding of your feet. Tailbone under so you're not pushing the buttocks back into the wall behind you. Now hold belly in, hold ribs in, and basically glue the back of your body against the wall. Now if it's too much for your neck for any reason, look down. And if you're trying this posture for the first time, I commend you. But if it's too much for you, you can let go of the strap and basically slide your left hand down the outside of the left leg. And you can even bend the elbow if you need to. If you're a regular practitioner, take this option along with me. Now we're here for another 30 seconds. If your elbows are already collapsed, or if you're looking down at the floor, roll the right side of the ribcage up, push the right hip out. Now you're gonna feel a lot of engagement in the core. And I mentioned this last week in our first yoga stretch class that active stretching requires muscular engagement of some sort. So it is correct to feel the need to engage in order to support your body to go deeper in this active stretch. Last inhale. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Change. <sighs> Come back to center. Exhale. Now let's let go of your strap all together, but we're going to use it later again, okay? Good job, shake your arms out, breathe in, <sighs> breathe out, inhale, and exhale. Now we're gonna go for simple salutations, nothing too complicated, just to limber up the rest of the body. Come to the top of your mat, please. With your palms facing forward and alongside the body, breathe in, reach up. Press your palms together, lift your ribs. Exhale, soften at the knees, bow forward. Place your hands on the floor or on your shins. Halfway lift, look forward. Try and straighten your legs a little more. Lift your tailbone, belly in, chin and eyes lengthening forward. Exhale, fold. 
Rise up. Two more times. Same thing. Inhale up. Find your balance as you lift your gaze. Exhale, bow down. Squeeze the inner thighs together like there is a block in between you want to wedge. Exhale, fold. Chin to the chest. Bring the forehead in between your shins. Inhale, lift. With your breath, expand. Exhale, fold. More body weight, channeling forward through your toes. Engagement of the thigh muscles for the size of the hips to widen. Halfway lift. Pull belly in, broaden collarbone, shine the heart forward. Exhale, fold. Now step your right leg back. Lower right knee to the floor and take the arms up. Find your balance here. Squeeze the inner thighs to touch. Use your left hand to hold on to the right wrist. We did half moon just now, right? We're doing the same thing, but in a different variation. Breathe in, belly button facing forward. And as you exhale, stretch to the left. Keep finding your balance. Lengthening through the right side of the body. Don't let your arms get lazy. Lock the elbows and pull to the side without allowing your left knee to spill open to the left. Press down strongly through your toe pads and go forward and downward with the pelvis. Back to center. Inhale, hands down, step back into downward facing dog. Exhale. Long spine, straight legs, straight arms. Inhale. Squeeze your armpits into the face and look in between the big toes. Exhale. Breathe in, lift the hips a little higher. Draw more body weight backwards. Breathe out. Keep the neck in neutral. Elbows are locked and strong. Feet together, right leg up. Step forward, right foot. Lower left knee to the floor and take the arms up. Breathe in deeply. Keep your right knee nicely stacked over the right ankle. Now we're going to go to the other side. Okay, right hand to the left wrist. Breathe in, grow tall. Narrow your belly, cinch your waist like you're wearing a corset. Exhale to the right side. Keep your head in between the arms. And if you can, do this action. Squeeze the biceps to the ears. Now instead of collapsing forward, lean the back of your heart and the back of your head backwards. Come back to center. Squeeze the inner thighs, inhale. Hands down, step forward with your left foot. Halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, back. Rise up. Look up, reach up. Namaste, hands to the heart. Breathe in. Forward fold, breathe out. Halfway lift, look forward. Exhale, back. Left foot steps back. Knee to the floor, arms up to the sky. Right hand to the right hip, lengthen. Left elbow crossing on the outside of the right thigh as you exhale. Right palm to meet the left, push down, peel the belly away from the inner right thigh and go send that right thigh bone forward and the right thigh bone down. And then push more through the right hand into the left palm. Lengthen the crown of the head away from the left foot. If you just join me, it's not too late to start. One more breath. Keep chin aligned with your right shoulder. One more exhale. Good job, everybody. Face forward, inhale, arms up. Hands down to the floor, exhale. Step back, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Point the tip of the nose in between your knees and lengthen your gaze in between the toes. The sides of the body that we have already stretched out should continue to lift out of the armpits and up towards the outer hips. Imagine a block in between your thighs. Squeeze, engage your thigh muscles a bit more. Squeeze the front of the shins to the bone and press down through your heels to stretch out into the calves. Feet together, left leg up. Oh, sorry tree. Exhale, knee to the forehead, left foot forward, right knee down, arms go up, inhale. Left hand to the hip, right elbow to cross, 
Squeeze your inner thighs together so that you can find and create balance. Forward with the hips, long with the spine, strong with the arms. Stay here for another three breaths. So a couple of days ago, um, one of the, the members sent me a direct message to ask if I could do anything for the middle back. Okay, so this posture, the left included, is for you who need, it's for your middle back. Any form of twisting um, would really help to stretch out and energize the middle back region. Remember to breathe while you stay here. Last breath, everybody. Broaden across the collarbones to expand more into the ribs. And slowly release, arms up, breathe in. Hands down, breathe out. The right foot steps forward this time. Inhale, straighten your legs a bit more. Exhale, bow down. Rise up all the way, deep breath. Flip the heart, hands to the heart. Namaste, long breath. Very nice, take the arms up, breathe in. Forward, forward, breathe out. Look forward, straight leg, straight arms. Inhale, exhale, bow down. Step right leg, left leg back into plank pose. Arms are straight, core is hugging into the midline. Power through the legs and draw your heels away from the lower back. Keep the neck in neutral and breathe. Knees to the floor, exhale. Cow spine, point your tailbone to the ceiling and let your belly sink down to the floor. Go a little more forward with your shoulders, press down into your palms, lock the elbows and open the throat as you breathe in. Cat spine, exhale. Tuck tailbone under, squeezing belly inwards and upwards. Separate your shoulder blades. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Lengthen your breath completely. Bring your feet together, right leg up. And now bend your right knee and squeeze your right foot to the left butt cheek. As you maintain straight arms and a straight left leg, keep your eye gaze on your left big toe. Now, use your right knee to draw three big circles in a clockwise direction. Let's do it together. Right knee cap like a pencil. Inhale, draw a big circle. Exhale, one. Inhale, second time. Exhale, two. Inhale, last time. Exhale, three. Anti-clockwise, other direction. Inhale. Exhale, one. Let's go slow and with control. Inhale. Exhale, two. Breathe in. Exhale, three. Now bring your right knee to your forehead and step forward in between the hands. Let's rise into warrior two. Stay where you are. I'm going to change my orientation to better serve the demonstration. Um, take your feet up nice and wide and keep the arch of the left foot in line with the right heel. We want to go really low. We're strong with the hips. We're straight with the arms. Now, align the chin with the right shoulder and open through the front of the hips. Scoop that right sit bone under and draw the right thigh bone down and forward in the direction of the knee. Lift through the arch of the left foot so all the engagement from the inner left leg switches on, becomes alive and supports your warrior posture. Press down into both of your feet, straightening both of the legs. Inhale, look up. Straight arms, press your palms and breathe in as they touch. Exhale, warrior two. Four more times. Inhale, go taller. Squeeze your inner thighs. Exhale, go deeper. Stretch your inner thighs. Inhale, three. Strong feet. Exhale, three. Go lower. Inhale, four. Lengthen the side body. Exhale, four. Feel the hips stretch. Inhale, five. Exhale, five. Very nice. Inhale, straighten your legs, straighten your arms. Now, if 
your mat is positioned like mine and you're really close to the wall, I invite you to do the same as we did in half moon. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep the warrior two posture. I'm just gonna bring myself closer to the wall, okay? We're going to do an active and passive variation of triangle pose. I have my blocks on standby already. Go and grab yours too. So in triangle pose, the right foot continues to lengthen towards the short edge of the mat and the left toes are pointing forward towards me. I have my blocks on standby because I, I know I'm gonna need a bit of help here. Place your right hand on your blocks and take your left arm up towards the ceiling. Glue your left ear, left wrist to the wall. Look up. Now, if you are too high and you don't feel any stretch along the left side of the body, go ahead and bring that block a little lower. So what I want you to receive while you're here is a tremendous um, passive stretch. So we're resting on the block right now, right? It's a tremendous passive stretch to the inner right leg and to the left side of the waist. So we're taking a breather here for another 30 seconds. Because maybe half of your upper body weight is now resting on that block that's underneath your right hand. Your job here is to breathe because in another 20 seconds, it's gonna get a little harder. So active stretching, in my honest opinion, is a little more challenging than passive stretching, but because both of them are beneficial in their own ways, Going to do both. <laughs> one more breath. Now for one minute. It's a long time, trust me. You're going to release the block. Bye bye. And you're going to just have your hand dangle and breathe as you look up. If you're new to the practice, place your hand on the shin. Okay, if you're a regular practitioner, you feel like it's too much for you, place your fingertips on the floor. If you really want to try to stretch more actively, no body weight. Now plaster the back of your body against the wall, 30 seconds more. Breathe. Too much for the neck, look down. You're still here, right? I'm still here. <laughs> I'm sweating together with you. And I forgot to prepare a towel. Ha! <sighs> so I'm dripping all over the mat, but it's okay. Let's get sweaty together. Two more breaths. Open the ribs. Lift the heart. One more breath. Inhale up. <sighs> Exhale, relax. Good. Now from where we are, we're going to lift the left heel for high lunge position and we're going to place the hands on the floor. Step back into down dog. Breathe in deeply. If you're a regular practitioner, you feel the need to flow through a vinyasa, please do. If you're new to the practice, stay here with me. Just be here with your breath. Two more breaths. Keep stretching through the back of the legs, the sides of the body while holding the belly in and keeping the face soft. You're ready to use your knee to draw big circles again. Feet together, left leg up. Bend the knee, foot to bum. So I'm pointing my foot so that I can engage my hamstrings to be, bring left heel closer to the right butt cheek. Keep holding belly in, pushing hands into the floor. Let's start anti-clockwise circles. Breathe in. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Clockwise. Inhale. Exhale, one. Feel your lower back really waking up to help stabilize the spine. Breathe in. Exhale, three. Inhale, straighten the left leg, knee to the forehead, step forward for warrior two. Stay where you are. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Now, 
we're gonna do the five warrior claps, okay? But let's just make sure that we really dedicate uh, good intention, good alignment to our hips. Now, a lot of people tend to lean more towards the front leg in warrior two. Is, if you can see yourself in the reflection or if you can just observe how you are in the body, send the upper body back a little. Good. As you shoot your fingertips away from the collarbones, you should feel a really nice stretch across the front of the heart. Now, look at your left fingertips. Go low, low, low. Inhale up. Squeeze the inner heels together. Exhale, one. Inhale, up. Belly in, spine is stacked. Exhale, two. Same thing. Belly in, spine is stacked. Go spill the gut forward, okay? Inhale, up. Legs are strong, palms are pressing. Exhale, three. Inhale, up. You have to stretch through the side body by lifting a little more actively. Exhale, four. Do you feel the inner left leg and the back of the left thigh? I do. Inhale, up. Exhale, five. Breathe in, up. And exhale, hands on hips. I'm gonna migrate myself against the wall now. Keep that warrior two stance. Move your blocks. Now, if you're nowhere near a wall or if your setup gets affected and you're near a wall, you can do this without the wall. Not a big deal, okay? Now, I'm gonna have my block here and I'm really going to take the first one minute while we are in passive triangle to catch my breath. How are you doing? <laughs> if you can't hear me or if you need to communicate with me, I'm about to go to the comment section in a little bit. Take the next couple of minutes to think about what you want to say. Maybe you want to say, thank you, Gabrielle. Or maybe you want to say, why is it so hot? <laughs> Make sure you, you communicate all those things to me, okay? Right ear to the wall, heart up to the sky. And if you're pushing your belly button forward, can you pull it in instead? Now really press and glue the right thigh bone to the wall. A little bit more. A little bit more. Still breathing. Straight arms, straight legs, spine as long. One minute, my friends. Ditch the block. Ready? Go. I'm gonna leave you there, but I'm taking note of time. <laughs> and you're gonna stay there like good people. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Zen, Shannon. I hope you guys are breathing while you're still there. Hi, Elena. Hi, Arjuna, Mizuho, Denise, and Leah. I'm keeping track of time. You still have another 10 seconds. Hi, Derek. Hi, Jane. Hi, Lily and Raha. And little Kyasu boy. How are you very Kyasu? <laughs> Breathe. Slowly, slowly. Come on back up. Squeeze in the thighs, belly in, lift. <sighs> I don't get to sigh as loudly as you do because I haven't held the posture. I was there checking that you guys are doing okay. But now what I'd like you to do is to place your hands on your hips and to turn your left foot inwards. So now we're going into a wide-legged stance, okay? Make sure you can see me from where you are. All 10 toes are pointing forward towards me. You're gonna roll the shoulders back and interlace the fingers behind you. So we're going for this posture called Prasarita Padottanasana, which is your wide-legged forward fold. Take a deep breath, stand tall, and as you exhale, knees are locked, belly is holding in. You're going to bow all the way forward. Keep your eyes open, forehead to the floor. Keep your arms straight, elbows are locked and palms are pressing in. 
As you channel your body weight towards the midsection of the foot, lift the arches, ground the outer edges, squeeze the inner thighs and widen your sit bones. Actively bow down by engaging the strength from your belly to help guide the torso underneath the bridge of the legs. Now bring your thumbs a little closer to the floor. Keep breathing here. Five more breaths. Inhale. Exhale. One. If you're working with any shoulder injury, go ahead. Just have your arms as they can, as they can be, and you can even use blocks, okay? Inhale. Three. Exhale. Three. Inhale, four. Legs a little straighter, spine a little straighter, bow a little more forward. Exhale, four. Inhale, five. Squeeze inner thighs, lift your tail higher. Exhale, five. Thumb down through your feet, come to flat back. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, release palms into the floor. Now we're going to do a passive variation of this wide legged forward stretch. Turn your fingers sideways. So right fingers turn to the right until they point to the space in between your feet. Left fingers turn out to the left. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stack blocks in preparation to rest the head. And then we're going to walk our hands underneath the legs and try to rest there. Take a deep breath first. Crawl your hands back. Rest your forehead on the block. You can adjust the height of the block. Close your eyes for one minute. And if you don't need the block, if you anticipate that you can go a little further, stretch it out, let the body feel good. If you maintain your straight legs, you will be able to feel the hamstrings, the buttocks, all the juiciness of this stretch helping you to bring some balance back to the body three more breaths let the head dangle let the eyes be soft one more breath Hands on the mat, halfway lift, flat back. Walk your hands towards the right foot. Turn your left toes out a little to the left and bend your right knee, turn it out to the right, arriving in this posture we call Skandasana. Some people might find Skandasana very overwhelming and if that is you, you can sit on your bolster, on your block, whatever works. If your right heel is lifted really high off the mat, you can place your block under as well. Your first option here is to have your hands in front of the heart. Now, if you're a regular practitioner of this posture, I encourage you to make the stretch active. So you're gonna flex through that left foot, straighten that left leg as best as you can, and try and dive the left thigh wing down to the floor while opening the right knee out to the side. Now lift through the ribs, come into your fingertips and crawl forward. Lengthen your arms towards me. Five juicy breaths. And your muscles are engaged to keep you stable and balanced. And every time you exhale, you think about sitting a little lower and crawling forward a little bit more. Sometimes it's a really overwhelming to stretch the body, but one thing that we cannot deny is that we almost always feel amazing after. So let out all that tightness. One more breath. I invite you to lower the back of the left leg onto the floor. Use blocks under the buttocks if you need to. We're going into the side stretch. Now, if you anticipate that you might need perhaps a strap to help you, okay, you can hook the strap 
around the left foot and hold it with your right hand. Okay? Your left hand will hold on to the outer right ankle. Now, if you want to chill out here like I do, take a block. We use a block to rest your left ear. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to use the left hand to hold on to your right outer ankle, breathe in, lift, and as you exhale, you're going to lean your torso on the inside of the left thigh, and then hold on to your left foot. If you need a strap, use it. If you don't need a strap, ditch it, and then lean your head on the block let your right elbow and right knee point up to the ceiling scoop the left armpit under so that it can rest on the inside of the left thigh let your heavy head rest on the block put it on a good height that will serve your body and enable you to still breathe smoothly. This posture is called Pavita Janga Sutrasana. It's one of my favorite postures. Feel what's happening here, right waist. What's happening here, left inner thigh. What's happening here, right hip. What's happening here, left hamstrings and calf muscles. So there's a lot going on in this posture. And so with the support of your block and your strap, see if you can be here and be passive. Relax and breathe. to the floor, left palm to the floor. <sighs> I'm sure your hair is as messy as mine, but the body is starting to feel amazing and we have one more side. Let's go. Try, challenge yourself, hands to the heart, push. Up you get, Ooh. and then left side, Kalan down, Skandasana. One minute here, my friend. If you have to support yourself, it's better that you give yourself that so that you don't overstrain any of your joints or injure yourself unintentionally, okay? Especially if you're new to yoga, you don't typically hang out like that unless you have some martial art sort of background. So you can stay here, you can stay here, no problem, do what you can. Okay, yoga is for everybody. Now, slowly walk your fingers forward, deepen that stretch, maybe lower that right thigh bone towards the floor, but without touching the floor because the stretch is still active. Now, one of the most common things that yoga teaches here is that people like to say that I cannot do yoga because I'm not flexible. I cannot do yoga because I'm not flexible. It is precisely because you're not flexible that you have to do yoga, <laughs> okay? So switch that mindset because what happens if you already feel tight and you continue not to stretch is that as you go older, the muscles will start to harden, they will start to shorten, and then when you go into your 50s or 60s, bending over to tie your shoelaces or to pick up something will become increasingly more difficult for you. So while you can, try to stretch, invite someone to stretch. I see plenty of people who are really tight in their muscles all the time, athletes, or office workers coming down into your side stretch, but they keep coming back. And part of that uh, really makes me commend them because 
their bodies are tight. But number one, they acknowledge it. And number two, they keep working at it. And I remember once there was this guy at the studio, he's about 65 years old, okay? So his hair is already gray. And one day he told me, he said, Gabrielle, a month and a half ago, I couldn't even reach my fingertips past my kneecaps. And today I could do that in class. And people always have that misconception. Oh, I have to touch my toes. Oh, I have to be able to do a handstand. I have to be able to do a split. If not, people will laugh at me. And that's completely wrong. Um, I, I, I couldn't have been more proud of him. I was so tremendously proud of him because I've seen his dedication, the time that he puts into his practice, and that couple of centimeters was an improvement that he noticed, was a joy that he wanted to share, and he was starting to feel better in the body. And he's 65. Do you realize how much courage and how much spontaneity and, and, and how much um, motivation it would require for someone who's 65 to start yoga? And so, so tremendously proud of him. And if you're doing yoga with me for the first time, or if you're feeling really stiff, but you're back over and over again because you know you need a stretch and you know it's good for you, I want to let you know that I am so tremendously proud of you as well. <laughs> Come back to center, inhale, up. And exhale to release. I hope that one minute passes a little faster when I tell stories. <laughs> Come back to center, hands on the floor, lift. Very, very nice. And walk your hands all the way to the top of the mat. Step back into downward dog. Stay here. Breathe three breaths or take a vinyasa. Breathe into the body. We still have a 120 of you guys still practicing with me. I hope you're sweaty, sweaty already. Hi, Madel. Good to see so many of you. Hi, Martha. Yes, you can do it. Slow down a little if you need to. One minute is a long time. Catch your breath. Hi, Angeline. Hi, Ivy. Now, eyes yandi. Bit by bit, tiny steps. Nothing happens overnight. You know, I, when I first started, I couldn't even touch my toes. I swear to you, no one believes me, but it's true. I couldn't touch my toes. So let go of any expectations and be where your body can be. Very nice, everybody. Come back down onto the mat. Now we're going to go into bridge pose. And I'm gonna um, have you try something a little interesting. We're gonna try and stretch out the front of the body, but use a strap to do so. So lie down on your body, lie down your back, I mean and then send your strap over the front of the ankles and see if you can reach the strap on both sides just like so, okay? Now, in preparation for bridge pose, the feet are hip width distance apart, your spine is on the mat and your palms are on the floor. Hold on to the strap but keep your hands on the mat, okay? Push down through your heels, tuck your tailbone under and towards the direction of the ceiling. Lift your buttocks off the floor, lower back up, middle back up, press down into your straight arms. Now lift the back of the heart off the floor. Lengthen the back of the neck, squeeze your buttocks, and send your knees away from your hips. Now reach for your strap and pull. As you pull, lift your hips higher. Take more body weight into your feet and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Now feel that stretch happening in the front of the hips, the length of the thighs, the front of the belly where your rectus abdominis sits. Hold here for five, four, three, engage the buttocks, two, one. Slowly come down all the way to the floor. Let's try that again, okay? 
okay? If you anticipate that you might still need the strap, use it. If not, this time round, walk your heels one step in towards the bum. Try and use your hands to grab onto your ankles. Take a deep breath, tailbone tucks, and lift the hips, and now stretch. So now we're stretching the front line of the body while engaging the back line of the body. More hamstrings, more buttocks, engage, squeeze, pull with your hands, draw your heels towards your ears, lift higher, 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 exhale to lower. Ah, knees to the chest. Hold on to your kneecap, circle your knees all around. So we've done a lot of side stretching, right? We've done uh, forward folds, we've done twisting, and now we're going to go into our back bends. Roll forward, sit up. We're going to go into this posture called Ustrasana Camel. And we're going to do two rounds. If you're new to this practice and need your blocks, sitting on height number three, on the outside of the heels, I also want your toes tucked under. Okay? Now, the distance in between your knees are hip width distance apart. Press down through your knees and lift up through your rib cage. Roll your shoulders back. Place your palms in your imaginary back pockets. Elbows squeeze to the back. Grow tall, inhale. As you exhale, tuck your tailbone under. Squeeze your inner thighs. Send your pelvis forward. Option one, stay here. Or you can reach for your blocks. Once you're steady, stretch your belly. Stretch your heart. Lengthen through the back of the neck, continue to engage there, and keep your chin to your chest. Turn your armpits up to the ceiling and outwards away from the heart. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, press out through your knees, come back to center, belly is strong as you lift. If you're new to this posture, do that again. Just bring the blocks one step lower onto height two. If you're a regular practitioner of camel, you can keep your toes tucked or point your toes back. We're really gonna stretch out actively through the front of the body. Breathe in deep breath. Exhale, lean back. Stay here or reach back. Stay here, I'll lift higher. Hips forward, thighs strong. Squeeze the shoulder blades, lift the front of the heart up to the ceiling. Keep breathing, press into your shoelaces for five. Turn your armpits away from the heart for four. Stretch into the belly for three, but hold the navel in for two. Squeeze the inner thighs for one. Place your hands in your back pockets. Hold your belly in, come back up. Inhale, child's pose. Belly, our buttocks to the heels. Arms alongside the body and very slowly lower to the floor. Once you're here, you can shuffle your hips from side to side, side to side. Pretty B <laughs> and Vivi and Connie and Lulu. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the process. Not easy, but straightforward. Straightforward and effective. Breathe into your body. So swing hips from side to side, side to side, almost like you're inviting the lower back to decompress. And for our final back bend today, roll the spine all the way up. Puppy pose, Anahata Sana. Now, if you're a regular practitioner, you know what to do. Go straight into it. You get the full minute of the hold. If you're new to puppy pose, what you can do is you can bring two blocks together. And from your all fours position, you're going to lower your elbows to the block. Then you're going to cut your face with your hands, lengthen your throat forward, and really sink down through the belly. 
You can be happy to stay here for one minute. If you want to go a little bit deeper, come onto your forearms. And if you want to go all the way, maybe block underneath the chest. Or maybe no block, chin on the mat. And palm block. Slow down your breathing. Inhale and exhale. Close your eyes. Another four more breaths. Jamila, when you're doing white leg stretching, it is okay to micro bend the knees, okay? Especially if you have hyperextended knees, you can micro bend as a means to protect your knee joints. If you guys have any questions, please post them here. I want to be able to answer them and help you. You're most welcome, DJ. Slowly untuck your toes, point them back, and sit your body still into your heels. Neck in neutral, breathe. And then chin to the chest, roll up the spine very slowly. We're going to take a forward fold. There are two variations that you can go into. Easy variation, lie on your back. Strap around the heels. If you can loop your strap, please do. If your strap or uh, your towel and necktie is unable to loop, you simply hold like that. And you can control how far you want to go, but keep the legs straight. If you want to loop it up, go ahead, hang the head this way, okay? Now, if you're a regular practitioner, you want to go into plow pose, you can do that too. Okay, in case you're supporting yourself with the strap, this feels amazing. Stretching through the back of the legs and you can even relax your arms and close your eyes. Only if you've already learned this in a Hatha class before, you can go into plow pose or snail pose, okay? Make sure that you are familiar with this and you're not suffering from any form of high blood or low blood pressure and you don't have any injuries in the neck or the shoulders. So up into shoulder stand and down into plow. You can tuck your toes under. Extend into the arms and widen the back of the neck. If you like to go into snail, bend your knees on the outsides of the ears. Hold on to the back. Or hold on to the legs. Three more breaths. And once you come out of that posture, you can feel free to stay in Shavasana. Enjoy a 5 or 10 minute Shavasana, however long it is you want it to be. 
or you can come have a chat with me if you have any requests, any postures, any part of the body that you want to work with, drop me a direct message, okay? My IG handle is right there, gabrielle.mendoza. Happy to be of service to all of you guys. Now, I'm also available for private yoga and group private classes. Check out my schedule on um, my profile. Have a lovely rest of your Tuesday afternoon, and I hope your body feels amazing right now. Namaste, everybody. Thank you and take care. Bye.